What is going on, guys? It's your model, the IWC Gamers Goon, here today with our very first time this year. We have the NFL Week 1 predictions. I'm very excited for the NFL season, man. If you can't tell already, repping my boy Allen Robinson, repping my Chicago Bears. Throughout the season, you're going to see me with many different jerseys. I was concerned throwing on a Josh Allen jersey. Um, I was trying to look for my Dak Prescott jersey because we got to start off with Dacky boy. Um, but th there's going to be a lot of different attires. I'm not just going to be repping the Bears this year. Bears my team, but I'll rep some players. I'll rep some teams as well. Um, but anyways, um, if you haven't already, go check out the Twitter, Games Goon YT. I did post an updated schedule of what I plan on be on t on doing this um, this fall in 2021. Um, these videos will be posted on Tuesdays, um, and also on those Tuesdays we will briefly go over the Monday Night Football game, because on Sunday nights I will be recapping everything that went down on Thursday and Sunday for that week. Um, but we're finally back in it, man. We're finally ready for the football season. It is two days away, and we're just starting it off with my favorite player of all time out there going up there, and he's going to be going out there against... Dak Prescott and company, we got Tom Brady, the GOAT, coming off of yet another Super Bowl championship, this time in Tampa Bay, not Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, coming out there, this team is, this team is still as deep as it was last year, man, it might have even got deeper, man, you still got Brady there, um, they got Leonard Fournette, Ronald Jones there still, they added Giovanni Bernard, um, Keyshawn Vaughn, shout out to the homie. Um, Y'all might not know. Yeah, I know he went to Vanderbilt. Sha, sha, sha. At one point, at one, which way is it? At one point, he he, he was at, he was at the Evo Vi. He was at Illinois. So let me hype him up. Um, We should be getting Cameron Brait back, I believe. Um, He should be playing. Um, So that, he's back. Um, Antonio Brown's back. They got Jalen Darden, a guy that I really liked in the draft process. He should be pretty solid for him. I don't think he's going to be anything uh, like anything like Tyler Johnson was for them last year. Um, but he's going to be a guy that can get some minutes. He can he can get some he can get some snaps for himself. Um, he's he's more so going to be one of those probably slot guys, third options um, if he makes the field. And he's he's not going to be a, a big threat, but he he he'll make you pay if you don't pay attention. Obviously, you got Mike Evans and Chris Godwin back in town. And, man, this tight end trio is nasty. You got Cameron Bray. You got O.J. Howard coming back. I believe he's healthy. Let me check right now. O.J. Howard, he seems to be healthy. I don't see an injury list next to him. And then we got Gronk coming back to play with Brady once again. And like I said, you got Tyler Johnson out there. You got Scotty Miller back. That offense is still as elite as it was last year. Their offensive line, they're bringing back Ryan Jensen. Um, and outside outside of Ryan Jensen, gets a little iffy, but I'm sure Tom Brady can fix it. Tom Brady knows how to work. Um, defensive line, they're still as good as they were. William Golston's back. Raheem Nunez no Rochez is back. Um, they got Nick and Sue back. They added Joe Tryon. Um, and they also brought back Vita Vea. Linebackers, obviously, they got Shaq Barrett back, Levante David's back. Um, then they got JPP back, Devin White's back. This team, man, up and down is phenomenal. This team, in my opinion, is favorites to win the Super Bowl again. They got Ross Cockrell back. They got Carlton Davis, Jamel Dean. Um, they got Sean Murphy Bunting, Jordan Whitehead, and, of course, Antoine Winfield back. Oh, my goodness, man. It is star-studded all over in Tampa Bay, in Tampa Bay, they they have to be the favorites. They have to be the favorites to win the Super Bowl. And if you're asking, if you're asking me right now what I think the Super Bowl is going to be, I'm going to tell you this. I think the AFC is going to give us the Bills, and I think the NFC is going to give us the Buccaneers. That's my that's my prediction. I thought we were getting it last year. I think this year is going to be Josh Allen's years to one up Patrick Mahomes and finally get to that next step, which is the Super Bowl for the Bills. Um, but this match right here, Cowboys Buccaneers. You look at the Cowboys side of things, man, it gets rough real quick. And that's hard to say because a lot of people go into the season every year hyping up the Cowboys, man. Um, I'm going to talk about Dak a little bit later, but running back situation, obviously you got Zeke, Tony Pollard. They should be fine off there. 
receiving situation. You got Cooper, Gallup. Um, who else they had? They had a um, they had a TJ Vasher, CD Lamb's back. I'm not in love with their receiving core. Um, but Michael Gallup, Amari Cooper, and CeeDee Lamb will be fine. CeeDee Lamb, I imagine, is probably going to go for 1,000-plus yards this year. Um, him and Amari Cooper should be fine. I'm not in love with their receiving core, but I like it. Um, it's not like, it's not like the, the, the Vikings, or it's not like the, the Buccaneers, or it's not like one of those teams that I just think that receiving core is going to be elite. I think this is going to be a really good receiving core. I just don't think it's going to be... To the point of what I'm thinking. Um, the offensive line's fine. Um, but then you get to the defense. The defense has been my biggest concern. Their secondary has been rough the last few years. They they went out. They got Malik Hooker. That's good for them. They, they knew that they needed to add somebody out there. They went out. They got Micah Parsons to play linebacker. They brought in Keanu Neal, who's supposed to be playing linebacker. And then you look at their secondary, and I'm hoping that they figure it out, man. Um... Because Malik Hooker is being added. Hopefully that's enough for him. Israel Mukuamu, hopefully that's enough for him, man. Hopefully that's enough for him. They could e they could easily move Keanu Neal back to safety. Um, I know he played safety um, for the Falcons for a period of time. He actually came into the league as a safety, I believe. Um, and then they tr are transitioning him to linebacker now. So Keanu Neal, maybe you can move him back to safety if you need it. Um, because I, I don't think that your front seven is too terrible. Um, because obviously you got Micah Parsons in there now. You have Demarcus Lawrence in there now. You have the talent up the front. The, 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 the main concern is the Cowboys last year, they were just shooting out with people, man. Like week after week, if Dak isn't in there putting up 30, it ain't going to be a victory. It ain't going to be a victory. And talking about Dak Prescott, that is my biggest concern going into this matchup. I don't know whether or not Dak Prescott is going to be 100%. From everything, he's going to be playing. He's going to be there. That's great. That's fine. That's dandy. Woohoo. But my question doesn't lie whether or not he's playing. It's how good is Dak Prescott going to be? Don't don't forget, he didn't, he's not coming off one injury. He's coming off with two. Two that I'm very concerned about. He's coming off of a leg injury that ended his year last year. Okay, is he coming back with mobility problems? Maybe he's not going to be as mobile as he once was. Maybe he's not going to be such a dual threat as what he was. Maybe he's going to have to just be more of a pocket passer. What's, what, how, how much of that is going to impact his game? Then, he also had the shoulder injury. Well, okay, is he going to be able to throw the ball far? Is he gonna, how, 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 how much of that motion does he have? I don't know. Is he going to fall wrong, and is he going to injure? And are we going to see Ben DiNucci get out there? Are we going to see Will Greer get out there? Are we going to see Cooper Rush get out there? I don't know. I don't know. That's the that's the concerning part to me. That's the concerning part to me. Coming off two injuries, not just one, two injuries, and two injuries that could significantly impact your play on the field, I'm very hesitant to say that Dak Prescott's going to come back and just leave where he left off. Dak Prescott, at his best, is a top-10 quarterback. Easy in the NFL. Easy. Is Dak Prescott coming off two injuries a top-10 quarterback in the NFL? I don't know. I don't know. And because I don't know what situation we're going to get with Dak Prescott, if the Cowboys are going to win the game, they're going to have to win on the ground. I don't think the Cowboys are going to have much issue scoring necessarily. I think they'll go out, they'll get 14, 21 points, something like that. I mean, they're not going to shoot out with the Buccaneers, but the Buccaneers at the end of the night, they're going to win. Um, I, I'm going to say the ending score is 35 to 21. The Buccaneers are good enough that they should beat them by two touchdowns, especially if you're exploiting the injury and you're getting to the QB and you're forcing Dak to be a little bit uncomfortable because you got, you got the defensive line to do it if you're Tampa Bay. You have the defensive line, you got the secondary to exploit it with interceptions, you got the playmakers offensively. There's no reason the Buccaneers should walk in and lose to the Cowboys. I have to go with the Buccaneers. It just makes the most sense to me. Um, but if Dak Prescott picks up right where he left off, we might have a ball game. I don't know, but I can't speculate whether or not Dak Prescott is going to remain who he once was um, coming off injury. Then we're getting into the 12 o'clock games on Sunday. My Sunday ticket better be working, man. I can't log into it right now, even though I bought it. 
And apparently in the email, I because I, it said it was spun day, the 5th online, but in my email it said you can begin accessing it at Sunday on the 12th. Why, why would I be wanting to access it on the 12th? What if I what if I don't want to watch my rerun of the Thursday night game, sir? Sunday. Sunday though. We got the Jets kicking it off against the Panthers. They're gonna be traveling all the way to Carolina and they are gonna be facing a very questionable Panthers team. Um the Panthers they were a team I enjoyed watching last year. I love their receiver dynamic there between Robbie Anderson and DJ Moore. I absolutely love it. Um, they have CMC back, um, Christian McCaffrey. He's going to be there. He's going to be putting up big yards in the pass and run game. Main thing, though, they made a trade this offseason, and they are actually going to be having to deal with Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. So what does Sam Darnold look like with the new receiving core? I don't know. That's the that's the worrisome part. Um. They added Terrence Marshall at the receiving core. They, 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 they're, they're, they didn't really add anybody on the on on their receiving core that I would say is going to be an immediate imp- like bringing in Robbie Anderson. I love that move, man. Robbie Anderson's a perfect guy for him. Get, he's a great route runner. He'll get a lot of targets. He might not be as big of a threat as DJ Moore could potentially be, but both of them are very very good. Um, then you got the running back situation. You got Royce Freeman there. You got Chuba Hubbard. You got CMC, Rodney Smith, and Rod Smith. So you got a lot of different guys out there that you could throw around behind CMC. Um, Chuba Hubbard, somebody that I really liked coming out of college. A guy that I think is very talented. Royce Freeman, another guy I really liked out of college. Um, obviously, I, I might be a little bit biased towards Royce Freeman because he's from Oregon. But hey, but hey, I, I I can't say that I'm not. I don't think he's good. Uh, defensive line, they should be fine defensively, to be honest with you. Just the three names alone are Yatur Gross, Matos, Brian Burns, and Derek Brown. That's 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 a very young core, but it's a very good core. They got Davion Nixon up in there now, Daquan Jones up in there. Um, they got Jeremy Chin making his, his return um, after last year. Hassan Reddick's there. Shaq Thompson, they're going to be a fine team defensively, in my opinion. Um, I don't think they got to worry too much. The question is, is Sam Darnold going to play? But luckily, they're going up against Sam Darnold's former team, the Jets, the J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. That is going to be, obviously, Zach Wilson getting the start there. And I'm very worried about Zach Wilson. Um, Now, this receiving core is a lot better than what you would initially have thought when you, if somebody said, well, you're going to get drafted to the Jets. Why would I want to go to the Jets, man? All they got is Jamison Crack. Well, they, they did address it. They got Corey Davis, who I believe is going to have a breakout year. I believe Corey Davis is going to go at least 1,000 yards, somewhere probably around 1,200 yards for the season, maybe eight touchdowns. I actually, Corey Davis this year is somebody in the fantasy drafts I absolutely love the value on. If you are listening, take value in Corey Davis this season. They also brought in Keelan Cole, a very good player out of Jacksonville. He was there. He wasn't the number one receiver. Obviously, you got DJ Chark there, but he, he can come in. He's an experienced playmaker there. Um, so those three alone should be okay. I'm not going to say any of them are elite. Um, they're all very solid. So you're, you're really not starting off um, Zach Wilson with anybody that's like a go-to. But it, it, at the end of the day, when you look at it up and down, the Panthers, just, the Panthers should just easily handle the Jets if we're being honest with ourselves. Um, so unfortunately, Jets fans, the J E T S Jets 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 are gonna get an L O S S. They are not going to be beating the Panthers. I got the Panthers in this one. I got it a twenty-eight to fourteen game there. Zach Wilson's gonna struggle. Zach Wilson's gonna feel the pressure. Zach Wilson's gonna make the mistakes. People are gonna start questioning Zach Wilson, but calm down. It's just the first game of the kid's career. Then we get into another one of one that I will keep my eyes close on. Last year, I paid attention to a few teams that weren't Chicago. Very in-depth. I think I watched almost all their games. The Bills were one of them. The Panthers were another one of them. Um, The Bills, they play the Steelers. Steelers, I kind of think it was a fluke run last year, to be honest with you. They started off very hot last year. Um, But I wasn't. You can go back and watch until when I had to leave because of personal things of family situation, a death in the family, um, when I was doing my predictions, 
you you could see that I I was like I don't really believe that this Steelers run is legit. If something doesn't feel right about it, they didn't feel legit. They weren't dominating people like they should be. They didn't, they felt like they weren't supposed to be there, and they didn't. They they proved they weren't supposed to be there. And then you look at the Bills going into last year, man. They were hitting on all cylinders. They going into the playoffs. They were hitting on all cylinders. They were going into the high horse, and then they they got their horse derailed. So you're looking at it, and you're saying Buffalo, Kansas City, you got two of the best QBs in the in the country, not just not just in the AFC, but in the entire league. You have two guys that honestly should have been MVPs over the actual MVP and Aaron Rodgers, because Aaron Rodgers does not really do what either of those two men did. Aaron Rodgers had a lot of empty stats. He had a lot of empty stats because they run that stupid goal line package where they refuse to hand the ball to Aaron Jones at the two-yard line, and they'll just run off play action. They do it every single time. I say it every single time when they're inside the top five. I'm like, I don't know why people don't just guard the play action. It happens every single time. And two guys that honestly deserve to win the, win the MVP over Aaron Rodgers. You have you have an MVP caliber player in Josh Allen who didn't only get scammed out of the MVP this season, but he also got scammed out of it being uh, being in the Super Bowl. Everybody thought Josh Allen. Well, I don't know everybody. A lot of people were on the Mahomes side, but there was a lot of people that believed that Josh Allen could get it done the way he was playing last year. And they look fine now. They they're brought back. Diggs is back. Um, they they got Cole Beasley back now. Whether or not you're a fan of Cole Beasley for his Beliefs is a different question. Gabriel Davis is back. Uh, former Chicago Bear Tanner Gentry's there. That's nothing to really talk about, though. Um, Isaiah McKenzie's back. Emmanuel Sanders is on the team now. They're going to be fine. They are going to be fine, man. Um, you look at their running back situation. I absolutely love their running back situation. I hate it for fantasy because I loved drafting Devin Singletary in drafts last season, and then Zach Moss emerged to be great as well. And now they added Matt Breida, who's also very good. And don't don't you sleep either on Taewon Jones, because he can get some time too. Um, so they got a very good running back room. They got my boy from Chicago. I'm not wearing the number, but hey, still repping the team. Mitch Trubisky, he's going to be the backup for Josh Allen this year. They got Davis Webb there. They got a lot of guys there, man. They got a lot of guys there. Um, solid offensive line, solid defense there. They got the playmakers, Gregor Rousseau, Tremaine Edmonds. Um, they they got a lot of names, man. Um, and then you look, and then you look at the Steelers. They're they're gonna be a team that they're gonna be solid. Um, Big Ben, he's gonna be there. Dwayne Haskins gonna be his backup, or I guess Mason Rudolph maybe. Um, but yeah, you look at their running back situation. Very interesting. I think there's four guys on the team you could play. Um, Maybe five. I don't mind Jalen Samuels. Um, but Najee Harris, very, very good running back out of college. See how he transitions. You got Edmonds out there. You got Kalen Bollage out there. You got Benny Snell out there. They're all playable players. Claypool's back. Ebron's there. Pat Freermuth's there. Deontay Johnson's there. Um, you got Juju, James Washington. They're going to be fine offensively. They're going to be fine defensively. The question is, will it all mesh together? Probably, to be honest with you, but I don't think that they're going to beat the Bills week one. That should be a very good match. Um, I think it's going to be something around the lines of 24-21 Buffalo. Then we get into the Eagles going out, and they're traveling to Atlanta to take on Matt Ryan and the Falcons. Um, The Falcons, obviously... Kind of got to address the elephant in the room. They traded Julio Jones. The Falcons, they kind of just feel like a team that's picking in the top 10 next year, man. They, they kind of just feel like a team that's going to be picking in the top 10. And the Eagles aren't much better, to be honest with you. Um, but you look at their QB situation, it's Matt Ryan, then it's Rosen, McCarron, and Felipe Franks. Matt Ryan, how much time does he have left? I don't know. I'm going to say they're not very good. I'm going to say they go out there, get a Rattler, get a Howell, get one of those guys. Malik Willis, go out there and get one of them. Um, Falcons, Eagles. I'm going to have to take the Eagles. Um, Not necessarily that the Eagles are any better. Um, The Eagles, I don't really think, are that great of a team, to be honest with you. Um, But 
Jalen Hurts should go out there. He should be fine if he's even the starter. I don't even know who's the starter. If it's Flacco, Minshew, I don't know who it is. Um, I'd start with Jalen Hurts. Um, he gives you the best shot to win. Um, Jalen Hurts goes out there. I don't think he's going to be an elite player this season. He could prove me wrong, but he's a player that I liked last year. I was like, well, this guy's a winner. He's coming in as a winner. It'd be nice to have him on a team if you need him. And the Eagles are going to need him this season. Um, but I got the Eagles. I think it's going to be a lower scoring match. I think it's going to be 17 to 14. Um, I got the Eagles simply because I don't see either of these teams being anything special this season. Um, they just don't really stick out to me as something that's going to really just have a breakout year. Yeah, you got Devontae Smith. Yeah, you got um, Calvert Ridley on the teams. But uh, at the end of the day, it just really doesn't matter, to be honest. Um, then we got the Chargers against the Washington football team. Um, this is going to be a brawl. This is going to be a brawl. You got the rookie QB from last year, the, the rookie of the year last year, Justin Herbert going out there against the defensive rookie of the year and Chase Young. Two great players at such a young age, futures of both teams' franchises. The football team has one of the most dynamic front sevens in all of football, and the Chargers have one of the most dynamic young QBs in the league, and they also got Keenan Allen out there. They got Mike Williams out there. They got playmakers to surround this man. The football team, Chargers, it's going to be a dogfight. Um, I would love to say the Chargers are going to win this because I love my boy Justin Herbert, but at the end of the day, I can't see them winning it. The football team's defense just too good, to be honest with you. Um, I think Herbert's going to struggle. I think he's going to struggle. And then we're going to get the, well, he's he's having a sophomore slump. Calm down. It's the football team. They have an elite defense. Football team's going to win this one. It's going to be 20 to 13. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a dogfight between the Chargers and the football team. Then we get to the 49ers going up against the Lions in Detroit. Once again, this is another one where the, there's one team that just it feels like they just don't belong. Um, the receiving situation in Detroit is miserable. It's miserable outside of TJ Hawkinson and Tyrell Williams. Um, I like Quintez Cephas, but let's be honest. Quintez Cephas isn't going to go out there and get 1,000 yards this year more than likely. If he proves me wrong, great. I, I Don't get me wrong. I am a big fan of Quintez Cephas, but... I don't think I'm very concerned about that. Um, 49ers, they should be trotting out. Um, I don't know if they're trotting out Trey Lance or Jimmy Garoppolo, to be honest with you. I would assume it's Trey Lance. I think I've been hearing it's Trey Lance. Um, can I find that out? I'm not going to look too in-depth. I'm going to go off the presumption that Trey Lance is starting for the 49ers. Um, they got Brandon Ayuk back. They got playmakers. They got Debo Samuel back. Those are two guys right there alone that I'm very excited about for this season. They should have very good years each. Both of them. I don't think. I don't think they're going to be necessarily having a thousand plus yard seasons because uh, you got to realize both of these guys are guys that you can use in jet sweeps. Guys, that, very very versatile guys. You don't just have to run them at receiver. I think they'll probably end up around like 800, 900 yards, but they'll have 200, 300 yards on the ground a couple touchdowns, because um, I, I could see them being a little bit creative with those guys. Devo Samuels, uh, especially, that guy is a guy that I'm very high on when it comes to the 49ers. The Lions, they stand no chance. I'm going with the 49ers, and that's going to be my first blowout of the day. I'm going to have it as 28-7. to um, 49ers, they're going over the Lions there in Detroit. Then we get the Seahawks traveling to Indianapolis. Traveling on down to the Midwest to face the Colts. The Colts, obviously, they got a new look coming for us. They got a certain QB this offseason, and that, of course, is Carson Wentz. Now, Carson Wentz is questionable. Um, I don't, I don't have any update whether or not he's going to be playing. He's listed questionable for the foot. Um. If he's not playing, they got Hundley on roster. They got Ellinger, Jacob Eason. I don't know who they run out there. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't know who they're going to run out there. They got Naheem Hines, Marlon Mack, um, Jonathan Taylor. Very scary running back room. That's going to be what they rely on heavily, um, especially on Sunday, where even if Carson Wentz playing, I think they're going to rely on it because you don't want Carson Wentz potentially getting re-injured. Um, Seahawks, they're a team going into this season. I have very high hopes for um somebody posted on twitter what teams do you think are going to make the their respected conference finals 
For the NFC, I had the Buccaneers and I had the Seahawks. The Seahawks, it feels like it's finally the time. It feels like it's finally the time. They got Russell Wilson, who was kind of in, in some rumors of being traded there for a moment. They got DK Metcalf back. They got Tyler Lockett back. They added it, um, Dwayne Eskridge. They added a lot of guys, man. And the Seahawks, I feel like they'll be fine. I feel like they'll be fine this year. They should be a 10-plus win team. I think they'll be fine. And I think they should come into Indianapolis, and they should handle business. I got the, um, the Seahawks winning this one. It's gonna be it's gonna be a closer one in my opinion, but I got the Seahawks pulling it out at the end of the day. Uh, I'm gonna say it's gonna be 23-20. Um, Seahawks going over the Colts there. Then we get into our third to last 12 o'clock game. We have a NFC North rival in the Minnesota Vikings traveling down to Cincinnati, going up to play Joe Burrow. Can't wait to see Joe Burrow, man. I can't absolutely wait, man. Joe Burrow, finally back after his terrible line got him injured last year. Thank you. Um, Jamar Chase did not have a great preseason. He did not have a great preseason. Came in as the top receiver drafted. Did not have a great preseason whatsoever. Um, then you got Tyler Boyd out there. You got Auden Tate out there. You got You got players that can make plays. At the receiver position, I I believe they have one more guy. Yeah, T. Higgins is out there as well. Um, but I don't. I'm not very confident in the Bengals this season. Yeah, they got they got one of my guys and Joe Burrow there. But at the end of the day, I don't know how much I believe in that O line. I don't know how much I believe in that Bengals team in general and the Vikings. They got a veteran QB in Kirk Cousins. He might not be an elite QB, but he knows how to get a couple wins here and there. And Kirk Cousins, he's going to have to be able to throw to Jeff um, Justin Jefferson. He's going to have to throw to Austin Thielen. He's going he, or Adam Thielen, my bad. Um he's going to have to be able to throw to some of these guys. I think I believe Irv Smith is actually done for the season. Um or he might be wrong, he might just be out currently. He has a meniscus injury. I don't know what that means, whether or not he's out for the season. They had a D.D. Westbrook, Wap Fillier, um, but Christopher Herndon was signed. He's a solid tight end for him. Um, but more than likely, it's going to be a Dalvin Cook show. It's going to be the Justin Jefferson show. It's going to be an Adam Thielen show. It's going to be a Kirk Cousins show. The Vikings have no excuse to lose, really. They have zero excuse to lose against the Bengals. Um, I, I, I would have to say the Vikings are definitely going to be the team I'm going to have to take. They have zero excuse to lose. They should win that one easily. Um, they should realistically win that one big. I don't think it's going to be as big as what they should, but at the end of the day, it's going to be 14 to the, um, to the Vikings 28. That it's going to be a two touchdown game for the Vikings, I believe. Um, but. I might be wrong. Bengals might prove me wrong. I don't know, but I have not seen much faith in the Bengals just yet. Then we get on down to the Texans and Jaguars hosting in Houston. Tyrod Taylor is going to be taking the snaps over in Houston for the time being until they get the Deshaun Watson situation figured out. I don't know what's going on with the Deshaun Watson situation. It's a very sticky situation. You don't want to get things right or wrong, or you don't want to speculate, but you also don't want to say things are oh, somebody's lying. You don't want to say Watson's lying because maybe he's not. You don't want to say that the woman's lying because maybe that she's not. You don't want to even really stick yourself in the situation if you're the Texans because either way that you go, you're screwing yourselves over. You either getting blatant, like, victim-shaming almost, if you believe Deshaun Watson's side of the story, or you're potentially blaming somebody on that is supposed to be your franchise player that, in the end of the day, might have not done what they did. So if you're the Texans, they did the right thing. You do not trot Deshaun Watson out there. Keep him on the sidelines. Keep him on the 53, man. You can't just get rid of Deshaun Watson. You can't just cut him until something concrete is said, until there's a resignation, a, a resolution, a, 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 an official statement. 
um, by a court of law or something of that nature. Once the investigation is fully concluded, that's when you make your decision on Deshaun Watson. I know there's been trade rumors. I don't know what team would want to um, get themselves involved in Deshaun Watson right now. A very, very sticky situation for everybody involved. You do not want to associate with Deshaun Watson if you are on the Texans. So for the time being, Tyrod Taylor is going to have to be that guy. Um, I'm excited for Tyrod Taylor. He was supposed to start last year, and nobody wanted him to start because obviously he was on a team, much like the Bears, where you got a rookie QB that everybody wants to see play. And hopefully, like the Bears, the rookie QB came in there when he got his chance, and he lit it up now. Was 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 uh, Tyrod Taylor's injury something that was avoidable? I don't know, um, but the the doctor that was working on Tyrod ended up injuring Tyrod, leaving the door open for Justin Herbert. He came in and he never lost the job. Tyrod Taylor, he's getting another opportunity as a starting QB in the league. Somebody that I think has been a fine starting QB in the league. I wouldn't put him up there in like a uh, Kyler Murray or a Dak Prescott or a Russell Wilson type of guy, um, but he's definitely he's definitely gonna be up in the league and he's gonna be a solid starting QB. He's not gonna be anything in the top like fifteen. He'll he'll be serviceable. He might be able to get you into a wild card game, but with that Texans receiving core, man, I don't see how it's possible. You got Jacksonville though. Jacksonville's walking in there. They got their fresh young QB. They got DJ Chark. They got LaVisca Chanel. They look all but happy to go in there in Tex- into Houston and ruin even the, the slightest bit of hope that there is in Houston. Houston is one of those teams that is going to be picking in the top 10 next year, and don't be surprised when they go out there and they get their new franchise QB, whomever that might be. But the Texans are going to be in the QB market. I don't know when or how or what the resolution is for Deshaun Watson, but I don't expect it to be any time within this short period before the first game. So that means Tyrod Taylor will be the one starting. And for the time, for the foreseeable future, Tyrod Taylor is QB1 in Houston. Um, I, I, I'm not very in love with Houston's roster, though. Their roster is very, very meh. They, they, they might be honest. They might be honestly a worse roster in my opinion than like the Lions. They they just they feel weird, man. They really feel weird. Then we got the last 12 o'clock game on Sunday and talking about Kyler Murray. I will be tuned into this one. There's no Bears games. Um, I'm actually going to be driving home from an Ohio State-Oregon game. Shout out to my Oregon Ducks. They won barely against Fresno State last week. Um, but I will be at that game this weekend, so expect a vlog out of that. Um, but... I'll be watching this game on the way home. It is the Cardinals going to Tennessee to face the Titans. It should be a showdown. Ryan Tannehill, a guy that I believe last year proved a lot of people wrong about him, a guy that I believe a lot of people wouldn't say was probably a top 20 QB in the league, and I'd argue that he might even be a top 10 QB in the league after his performance last year. He had A.J. Brown, Corey Davis going for him. Obviously, Corey Davis isn't there anymore, but... I'll take what their replacement of Corey Davis is because their replacement is one of the best receivers in the league for the last 10 years, and Julio Jones. They're getting Julio? No, I don't even need Julio to come in and be Julio of his Super Bowl losing Falcons. That's what A.J. Brown's for, man. That's what A.J. Brown's for. I just need you to come in and be the, the, the Julio Jones you were last year when healthy. Just come in and be Julio. You don't need to be an elite Julio. You just need to come in and be Julio, man. Julio's a beast. Any version of Julio's a beast. Whether he's in his peak or whether he's now, he's still a beast. You got him with A.J. Brown. You got him with Derrick Henry. You got him with Ryan Tannehill. You got him with a solid defense. Holy cow, man. Julio's going to have a phenomenal year. I can't wait to see Julio in a successful situation with a QB that I actually don't mind watching with a, a team around it that I actually enjoy watching with A.J. Brown, Derrick Henry, some of my favorite guys in the league. I'm very excited for him. I'm very excited for Julio. Um, Julio was one of those guys. Um, I will let you know, I don't have all NFL jerseys, but he was when, I, when I'm trying to get certain teams, because I want to have all 32 teams, when I was looking at the Falcons, I was like, Julio's that guy. Julio or Ridley or that guy. 
Um, so I, I mean, Julio, Julio. Hopefully, he has a phenomenal year. I drafted him in one of my leagues. Julio, go out there and go crazy for me, my friend. Um, you know what? Be uh, AJ Brown's phenomenal, but you know what? Let's return to old Julio. Let's go receiver one out there. We got two receiver ones. Not even a receiver two. They're both receiver one out there. Let's see it. But let's let's turn this into Carolina, except more yards. Let's both go out there and average 15, 20 fantasy points a game. Let's go crazy. Let's go crazy, Julio. Julio going to step in there. He's going to have a big showcase. Cardinals, they're going to step in there. Kyler Murray's going to be ready to get his name back out there and as a top QB. He wants to lead that team to an AFC championship run there. Um, it is gonna, It's going to be something special, man. It's going to be something special. Um, at the end of the day... At the end of the day, I I don't know who goes and wins this match, to be quite honest with you. Can I not see? Did I mess up? I feel like I messed up. I feel like I messed up. I feel like, I for some reason... I did mess up, I believe. Yeah, I did. They are in the NFC, so I was incorrect about the AFC. I was like, they aren't. I was like, Pittsburgh's AFC. They're not NFC. They're not AFC. But they step in there. Kyler Murray, ready to show what he's got in him. I'm excited um, for this game. It's going to be one of the top matches at 12 o'clock. It's going to be fun. It's going to be hype. I'm going to be flipping between this and probably the Steelers Bills game. Um, but at the end of the day, I gotta go with the Titans. I don't disrespect Derrick Henry. I don't disrespect him. Derrick Henry's gonna go in there. He's gonna get his 150 yards. He's gonna go out there. He's gonna get his two TDs. He's gonna go out there. He's gonna win this football game for his team. Um, expect it to be ground and pound. Derrick Henry's Derrick Henry, best running back in the league. I don't care what anybody says. It's not Christian McCaffrey. It's 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 none of these guys that you believe it is. It is Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry's the top running back in the league right now. Then that leads us to the 3 o'clock games, my friends. Let's talk about another one of my teams, the Patriots. They will be defending their home turf against Miami. It's going to be Tua versus Mac Jones. Matchup that we saw in college. We, we, we seen Mac Jones and Tua. They were both at Alabama. What's going to happen next? I don't know. Jalen Waddle's going to be there. There's um, there's going to be a lot of fun here. Patriots, though, yeah, they brought in Hunter Henry. Yeah, yeah, they brought in Nelson Aguilar. But at the end of the day, I'm not very excited for this Patriots season. Man. If you know me, my second team has been the Patriots for however many years now. Since I've been watching football, Patriots have been that second team because of Brady being there. And I'm obligated to stay with the Patriots, man, but it is hard that we got to sit there and we got to watch them cut Cam Newton. Cam Newton's serviceable, man. You could I don't want to see Mac Jones stroll out just yet, man. Not just yet. I'm not very excited about the Patriots season as I am about some of the other teams this season. The Patriots should be it should be an okay team to watch, but I'm not very I'm not, I don't have much high hopes for him. Um meanwhile, the Dolphins, they come in with all the hope in the world, man. They come in with all the hope in the world. They got Tua, his first full year with the Reigns. They're coming off a year where they should have made the playoffs, to be honest with you, but they were tied in the wild card with 11 wins. They're coming in better. They have more playmakers now. They have a very nasty playmaking um, uh, group. They added Will Fuller. They added Jalen Waddle. It's going to be nasty. They are ready. The, the Dolphins are ready. If if they can't succeed now, Tua is not the guy. That's simple. Tua is not the guy if they can't succeed with this team. They should have no excuse to miss the playoffs this year. The Dolphins, I expect them to go full force in this game. I expect the Dolphins to dominate this game. The Dolphins have a very good defense. They have a very solid, hopeful-looking offense. And we should see the Dolphins win this one, something around the lines of 35-14. to 14. Um, I don't like saying that against New England, but at the end of the day, the Dolphins just they just seem on paper way better than what New England has to offer. 
Then we get into the other 3 o'clock games. We got the Broncos traveling on over to face Joe Judge and his New York Giants. The Giants, Daniel Jones going to be out there. Uh, the Broncos, I believe they said Teddy B is going to be starting out there rather than Drew Locke. Um, I'm very excited. Cortland Sutton's going to be back. It should be fine. It should be fun. Jerry Judy's going to be out there. going to see them for the first time really just have a full season together because obviously Cortland Sutton got injured last year. You got Noble Fant out there. You're going to have a salt. You got Von Miller back. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a fun Broncos team this year, and hopefully, hopefully they win. Hopefully they win some games. Um, the Broncos are a team that I'm not necessarily a big fan of, but I would like to see them succeed. I'd like to see the Broncos succeed. They have players up on that team that I like. They got Bryce Callahan. They got Kyle Fuller. I would like to see those guys succeed in a different environment than Chicago. And they're on Denver. Denver's not a team that I necessarily hate. And if, if, if Kyle Fuller was like Adrian Amos and just decided to go to the Packers, then I wouldn't be wishing success. But the Broncos are a fine team. The Giants... A team that I think is a lot better than they were last year. You got Daniel Jones. You got Kenny Galladay. Um, I, I believe they added another receiver. Um, I can't. I can't think of who it is off the top of my head. They added. They added John Ross. Yeah, they added John Ross to their roster. Oh, and they also drafted Kadarius Tony. Two guys that are very. Very dynamic playmakers if you can get them in the right situations. Um, the Giants, they're going to be better than they were last year. Saquon's back. Um, obviously getting injured in the Chicago game last year. The Giants, I don't have much faith in their their team right now. And that could change. Because, obviously, like I said, they have a lot of talent on that team that I think they're going to be better than last year. But I don't know how good they're going to necessarily become. The Broncos are a team that I'm, I'm kind of going in with a little bit of confidence in, man. Believe it or not, I think the Broncos could be a little bit of a, of a dark horse to be in the playoffs. Um, I might be completely wrong with that statement. And obviously, it's, we haven't even really gotten into the real the real season yet, but I'm going to take the Broncos here. Um, I'm going to go with the Broncos. I'm going to say the defense gets reignited in Denver. We're going to have a defensive battle between the Giants and the Broncos. It's going to be a low-scoring matchup. It's going to be 14-10, to 10, and the Broncos are going to escape New York with a victory. And we got another 3 o'clock matchup, potentially the matchup everybody wants to see. We saw it last season when it was Aaron Rodgers going up against Drew Brees, but this time it is going to be Aaron Rodgers going against Jameis Winston, the new starting QB in New Orleans. And no, it's not because he beat out Drew Brees for the spot. It's because Drew Brees retired. Um, I'm very nervous about the Saints at the beginning of the year, not so much once everybody's healthy. Um, the Saints, they don't have Michael Thomas coming into week one. Um, and I believe they're also missing somebody else. And who else are they missing? I think, is Traquan Smith healthy now? Traquan Smith might be healthy now. But um, they, Michael Thomas will not be there week one. Um, I think this is going to be a Marquez Holloway game, or Callaway game. Um, it should be It should be fine for him. He should be fine. Um, then you got obviously Latavius Murray out there, Alvin Kamara out there. They'll do their, their, their splitting of carries. Kamara obviously getting more carries than Latavius Murray, but Murray can get in there. He'll give you about five, 10 carries a game. He'll be solid. He'll get you, get you about 20, 30 yards that you need when you need it. But at the end of the day, the Packers, they got Aaron Jones back. Um, you got Aaron Rodgers back. Aaron Rodgers always figures out a way to win. The defense in Green Bay is very good. Um, I hate admitting that their defense is good, but they're a very good defense. And at the end of the day, Aaron Rodgers knows how to win. He has Randall Cobb back. He has Devontae Adams back. It's fine. It's fine for Aaron Rodgers. He'll be well off. And unfortunately for the Saints, I don't know if their defense can handle that, what Aaron Rodgers is going to do. So this is my first huge blood. I've had a blowout with the, with the 49ers game, I believe. But this is going to be a blowout of all blowouts this week. This is going to be my highest scoring team of the week, and I have the Packers winning 42-10. to 10. I don't think the Saints get it going. I do not think Jameis can get it going. Not when you got the pass rushers that Green Bay has. 
Not when you got them breathing down your necks like Zadarius Smith, like Rashawn Gary. You're not you're not getting you got Jair Alexander ball hawking. You Adrian Amos back there ball hawking. You're not beating them if you're Jameis Winston unless you got Michael Thomas out there. And unless you have a fully healthy Traquan Smith, who I believe mm, it looked like he might be healthy. I don't know, but I thought that he was injured. Um, but Marquez Callaway is going to be a guy to watch for at that receiving core. And you're also going to have to watch for Alvin Kamara, obviously. Um, how much of an impact does he have? Um, if they can stop the run, then I guarantee the Packers win. Guarantee the Packers win. If they can, if they can somehow figure out a way to t- contain Alvin Kamara, they win by a lot. But... Don't be surprised if, if I'm completely wrong in this because at any point Alvin Kamara could just be that guy. Because Alvin Kamara has all the talent in the world to do something special, and that would be something special. Um, then we got a, another matchup that a lot of people are going to be tuned into: an AFC showdown, a battle between Giants, a, a matchup people believe might be the AFC Championship matchup this year, and that is Baker Mayfield traveling to Kansas City. To go up against Patrick Mahomes in what is bound to be a shootout, in my opinion. Everything on this looks to be a shootout. Yes, I know the Browns have an elite defense there. They have a lot of good playmakers out there. Um, We have a lot of high hopes going in for the season for Miles Garrett. But at the end of the day, you have Odell Beckham Jr. out there, Jarvis Landry out there. Um, I don't even know who else. I mean, David Njoku, I believe, is he still, is he injured still? Um... He was injured at one point this offseason. You obviously you got Nick Chubb out there. You got Kareem Hunt out there. Oh, Odell's questionable. Odell's questionable. That might change things. Rashad Higgins is out there. Austin Hooper, big pickup. David Njoku's healthy. Donovan Peoples Jones is out there. And then you got Baker. Baker's gonna put up points, man. Whether you like it or not, Baker's gonna put up his points. And that's gonna happen. And it doesn't matter how good of a defense the Chiefs go against. I've only seen one defense really stifle the Chiefs' offense, and that was in the Super Bowl last year. Um, and Patrick Mahomes, obviously, with how last season ended, he's going to come in this year hotter than he's ever been. Don't be surprised if him and Josh Allen are the two competing for the champion or for the MVP and, and the Super Bowl championship. To be honest with you, um, I believe the Super Bowl champion will be out of the NFC or at the AFC this season. Um, Chiefs, they are going to come in here. It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be a fun matchup. The Chiefs are going to win at 38-35, and we're going to walk out of there very pleased on what happened there. It's not going to have – it's going to have some defense, but it ain't going to be anything that's worth talking about. Then we get into a game that there's bound to be a lot of defense because these are the two best defensive teams in the league when you talk about defensive teams. Historically, historically, I know the Bears weren't good last year defensively and don't act like they were – I don't care what you say, Stephen A. Smith. Act like you you watching Bears games when all you do is sit there. Well, they had a great defense. No, we didn't. No, we did not. No, we did not. I think it might have been more so to deal with Chuck Pagano running the defense. But hey, we got Sean Desai out there this year. We got we got to figure it out. The preseason looked a little rough. We only got four corners going into Week One. But hey, we got to figure it out. I mean, yeah, Alec Ogletree gonna be a corner. You heard about all the interceptions this man be getting in practice? Alec Ogletree going out there. Obviously. we got Khalil Mack. He's going to have a great year this year. We have Akeem Hicks, who might even be traded by the end of the year. we got Eddie Goldman back. we got Bilal Nichols back. we got Kyrus Tonga, who we're high on defensively. Bears defense is ready to make a stand. we got Jalen Johnson. we got we got Tashawn Gibson. we got Travis Gibson. we got our boy E-Jack, Eddie Jackson. We got some guys that they're they're high on, like Duke Shelley and Kendall Vildor, that hopefully pan out for us. And then you go to the Rams. The big bad Rams. Jalen Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey. Hello, my friend. Hello, my friend. Darnell Mooney. Jalen Ramsey. That'll be a fun matchup. Remember what happened last time? Mr. Slip. Woo, Jalen Ramsey was salty about that one, wasn't he? Talking about, oh, you're hyped out about your receiver, too. Oh, yeah, our receiver, two made you look like a fool. Imagine my receiver, one, on you, Jalen Ramsey. Aaron Donald out there. Aaron Donald. He's a beast. But this is going to be a high-intensity game defensively. Jalen Ramsey's going to be emotional. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. 
Um, I just hope it isn't as bad as the last time we've seen the Bears offense, and it might be. This is a tough defense to combat, especially when you don't have a mobile QB. We're running out Andy Dalton, who, don't get me wrong, he's not immobile. He can move, but he's not hes not nearly the, the, the kind of guy that you need in this situation. You need a... Like Mitch Trubisky, he's a lot more mobile than Andy Dalton. Justin Fields, a lot more mobile than Andy Dalton. But hey, everybody's more mobile than Nick Foles. So at the end of the day, are we winning? Maybe. This is going to be a rough match. This is going to be a very, very highly watched match. This is going to be a match that everybody's going to have their eye on. Because literally everybody... And not just a Chicago fan base, but the NFL fan base in general. You listen to anybody that has talked about the NFL this offseason, during the preseason. Everybody has come into agreement that the Chicago Bears shall be starting Justin Fields Week 1. However, they are not doing it because Matt Nagy made a promise to Andy Dalton when they signed him that he would be the starter, and they are all, everybody's saying, well, is he just doing this because he's I'm trying to be a man of his word? Is he trying to do this because he thinks that's really his best opportunity to win, or is he doing this because he, he wants to add another year to his contract? Because everybody knows, once once we get the word on whether or not the development of Justin Fields went the way that everybody wants it to go, that's when the decision's made about Nagy. Nagy's timeline legitimately in Chicago is as long as they need to evaluate Fields. If Fields, when Fields takes over, if he's not the guy, Nagy's job's done. Nagy's out of there. There's no reconciling. Everybody knows Matt Nagy's on a very thin leash this year. He goes out there and he has anything less than a good year. He could be gone like that, but Nagy's not gonna do that. Nagy's not gonna he's not gonna go out there and he's not gonna put Justin Fields out there, even though Justin Fields is more than ready, because Nagy needs another year on his deal. Everybody knows that Justin Fields should be the guy week one. He looks like it, he acts like it, and he gives us the best chance to win. He's mobile against a team that you need to be mobile against. He gives you the best opportunity to win. And he's had to come out here. He said, well, we got to wait for the right situation. We got to follow the Mahomes path. We got to do this. We got to do that. There's no proof that any of that works. Justin Fields, if he's ready, he is ready. He's not going to be ready by week three if he's not ready by week one. So starting him in week three when you don't start him week one makes zero sense. Yeah, you might have something go wrong with Dalton. Yeah, you might have Dalton mess up. You might do what you did with Mitch where you give him a very thin leash. He makes one mistake and he's out the door. Or, you should go the route of starting Justin Fields. Give us a full year. Do what we did with Herbert. Let's really let this kid learn. Let's really let him learn. You're going to learn more on the field than you're going to learn on the sideline. I fully believe that. I fully believe that. Either way, your job's getting reevaluated next season. Not this offseason, next offseason. You let Justin Fields play this year. You get the excuse going into the offseason for the McCaskey family that this was still developing him. This was all to get him where he needed to be, and next year is our year. Or you wait till next season. And your thing is, well, we didn't play our rookie QB. We had him developing. And then you play next season, and what happens happens. And you got to hope that he's ready. you got to hope that he learned enough by sitting on the sidelines, by not doing anything, not creating chemistry with his players, creating chemistry with the team that he's going to be running. And then there you go, two years off his career. Because they ain't going to sit there and let you have the third year of Justin Fields if he isn't ready. If Justin Fields is not ready by year three, Matt Nagy's not there. He's not there. Because one year going into a contract extension because he has a four-year deal, one year before his contract extension? Why would anybody want to finish the development then? Start it off early, get him in games, learn situations, and play football. 
That is the biggest thing with Justin Fields. He's not going to learn from looking at a play sheet. He's not going to learn from sitting on the sidelines. He's going to learn by playing the fucking sport. Play Justin Fields week one. You're not going to. It's going to be Andy Dalton. Everybody knows it's Andy Dalton at this point. Andy Dalton does not give you the best shot to win the football game, and I fully believe that. There's a lot of people that fully believe that as well. Does Justin Fields make an appearance in week one? Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine. Justin Fields obviously could make an appearance if Andy Dalton does not live up to what Matt Nagy believes his expectations are. Um, and obviously, Justin Fields will be the most watched QB in Chicago history at this point because all eyes are on him. All eyes are on him. Everybody thinks this kid's the guy. Everybody thinks he's the real deal. It's time to see whether or not that's true. Um, Rams-Bears should be a fun one. It should be a defensive battle. And honestly, I don't really expect Chicago to win unless Justin Fields even at least gets some time. I have the Bears losing 20-13. to 13. Um, The Rams, they'll win the game if if we can't. If Andy Dalton's in there, the Rams are winning the game, more than likely. Um, but maybe 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 the Red Rocket, Red Rifle, whatever you want to call him, maybe he proves me wrong. Hopefully he does because that'd be that'd be cool, man. I would love to see Andy Dalton go light the world on fire, man. I would abs- I would actually love it, believe it or not. Believe it or not, we might want to see Justin Fields in Chicago, but I'm going on the record. If Andy Dalton starts lighting the world on fire, there's no bad <laughs> I-, I think he has a better shot at-, at coming in and doing something than Nick Foles ever did. Um, that's why I really wasn't too hard on the Andy Dalton move. Um, Andy Dalton's a much better QB, in my opinion, right now than Nick Foles was last season. Um, just Nick Foles never made sense to me. Andy Dalton, I kind of understand. Um, I'm not a huge fan that we're not starting a rookie QB, but at the end of the day, Andy Dalton is one of the Bears, so I'm not going to be rooting against him. Um, I would love to see Justin Fields, but definitely on Sunday, we're going to be rooting for Andy Dalton to hopefully get the job done there. In LA, do I think we're going to win? Probably not, but hopefully we do. Then we get the Monday night football game, which will be talked about next week's predictions. Um, it's gone almost an hour this week, and that is the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson going over to Vegas and facing Derek Carr and his Raiders. Um, the Raiders, I don't have high hopes for them this year, to be honest with you. I expect them to be an average team at best. I don't think they're going to be anything too special. Um, the Ravens, on the other hand... They, they, they got some playmakers. They got some playmakers. They don't have J.K. Dobbins this year. He got down, injured. Um, Lamar Jackson's one big hit away from an injury um, with the way he plays football. But, hey, I got to go with the Ravens. I'm going to get on out of there after that. Um, Ravens, I got them winning 24 to the um, to the Raiders 14. Um, Ravens should win this game, no problem. Ravens are going to be one of those top three teams there in the AFC to, find, to hopefully contend. For a Super Bowl, I'd love to see Lamar Jackson hopefully get some some real playoff success, um, and just get a little bit of a run. Maybe get to the maybe get to the AFC Championship game. Uh, it'd be nice to see Lamar Jackson do something. Um, but I gotta go with the Ravens. And with that being said, I'm gonna get on out of here. Thank y'all for watching Gamers Goon YT on the Twitter and the Instagram at the Goon Gamer YT. Um, I was over there this weekend for wrestling content. If you are interested in that, definitely tune in. Um, but I also posted my, my new updated schedule on Twitter. Um, Tuesdays is going to be NFL videos. Um, then we got um, Saturdays. I'm going to be reacting to some college football games. The ones that matter are the ones that I'm watching. So, like, next this weekend, it's not going to be that case. It's just going to be an Oregon vlog because I'll be at the game. Um, next weekend, um, after this weekend, I will be in Oregon. I'm going to be moving back. And I will be at the Stony Brook game. So, we're going to get a vlog there potentially. Um, but I'll be talking about some of the games that I watch. Um, I'm not going to watch all games, but I'm going to watch the ones that I want to watch. So I might like watch the, I'm definitely going to be watching all the Illinois and Oregon games. Um, but if I tune into like a Georgia game here or there, if I tune into a Coastal Carolina game here or there, or an Arizona game or whatever the college might be, I'll come down talk about it a little bit, tell you, um, what's going on, um, there on Saturday nights. Um, unless I am at one of those night games in Oregon. And for that case, I'll probably just upload a vlog. And then on Sundays, after the after the Sunday night game, I will be, no matter when the Sunday night game ends, if it ends at 11, ends at 10, I don't care when it ends, I will be 
coming on here and I'll be recapping your Sunday and Thursday nights worth of football for the NFL and telling you what I thought going into next week about each and every single team that I had got the opportunity to watch. Um, obviously, I can't watch every single NFL game, um, but I definitely do make an effort. Uh, last year, I was able to watch probably about three three games at a time. Hopefully, I can make more this season. Um, because my, my, my Sunday ticket, I flip back and forth um, between a lot of different games. Usually just the ones that I have fantasy stake in. But then I also usually have my YouTube TV up, which has another game. And then I did have my Hulu account up, which had another game. But I don't have my Hulu account anymore. At least not the streaming part of it. I had the movie part, but I did not renew my subscription for the streaming part. Uh, mostly because I don't need it um, outside of potentially watching another one. But I probably just try to watch both games that are streamed on YouTube TV. Um, the only issue with that is I can only have three devices on my YouTube TV or on YouTube TV at the time, and obviously, um, since I'm sharing it with my family, more often than not, they'll have at least two devices. Um, but I'll be able to watch at least one of the games with my Sunday ticket. Um, I won't be missing Bears games. I will not be missing Bears games whatsoever. Um, more likely than not, I'll be watching a lot of Seahawks games this year because obviously I'm out in Oregon. A lot of my friends and roommates are Seahawks fans. Um, I'm going to watch a lot of Titans games more than likely. I really like what their direction is. Um, probably going to watch some, um, some Packers games, unfortunately, some Colts games, going to watch some Chargers games, going to watch the Dolphins, going to watch the Patriots, Bills, all of them, man, Panthers, all, everyone you can think of, I'll probably watch at least one or two of their games, um, but there's certain teams I'll watch a lot more of than others, um, but I'll definitely be keeping, I mean, full games, not just bits and pieces is what I mean by watching their games, um, I'll flip back and forth and see what's going on with certain teams. But um, the, the, the certain games will get my full attention. Like Bears games are going to get my full attention every single time. Um, and then sometimes certain games going on, I might have a, another another screen open um, on YouTube and another screen open on, on Sunday ticket and focus on one of those games and just use the other one as background noise, look over every so often during commercial breaks or whatever it might be. But big week. Big week, man. I, I'm going to be traveling to Columbus for the huge, huge playoff game. Well, not even playoff game, but has playoff implications um, between Ohio State and Oregon. Um, should be a very good game. Fresno State last week was kind of tough. But Ohio State, they kind of struggled too. They kind of struggled too in their matchup. Um, they, they struggled against Mo Ibrahim um, and, and, and Minnesota. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um it it should be something worth at least at least a good show. Um, both teams had their struggles. Both teams had quarterback woes at one point. Both teams seem to figure it out by the end. We'll see what happens. Um, I don't know what's going to happen between the two teams, but it should be a fun game nonetheless. Um, like I said, I'm getting out of here. Thank you all for watching. It's been Gamers Goon, and I'll see you all next time.